For more than 60 years, we have been searching for traces of other intelligent beings in space. But so far, in vain, all messages which scientists sent even in faraway regions remain so far unanswered. And as it looks, also nobody seeks to contact us. Some researchers claim that there are good reasons for it. Today, we'll look at five reasons why we can't meet aliens. But first, we would like to ask you for a small contribution. You can support our work in the best possible way by subscribing to our channel activating the notification bell, and giving us a like at the end of the video if you enjoyed it. We start now with the top five reasons why we can't meet aliens. There are no aliens. Just 100 years ago, we humans barely knew about our solar system. Observing planets with telescopes was possible, but we had no idea what the planets on the surface were like and whether humans or other life forms existed on Jupiter, Mars, or even Venus. Since the first space probes flew through the solar system in the 1960s, it became clear that our neighboring planets are uninhabited. Even the search for minimal traces of life, for bacteria or simple lichens and mosses, has so far been unsuccessful. In the meantime, we have telescopes with which we can detect planets outside our solar system. We have even found some exoplanets in the closer cosmic vicinity of the Earth. It's still unclear how life-friendly these are. Only one thing is clear, no signals reach us from out there. No one seems to be looking, except for us. In 1960, astronomer Frank Drake first searched for traces of extraterrestrial signals with a radio telescope in two nearby sun-like star systems. Later, Drake's efforts evolved into the international SETI project. Researchers have been listening into the depths of space for 60 years, hoping to pick up anything that sounds like a living being, a civilization, or a technical device. In all that time, there have been three or four signals that could not be explained by natural phenomena. But the big find of a techno-signature, which gives the clear indication of extraterrestrial radio messages, did not exist. We have to face the possibility that there just aren't any aliens out there, that we really are all alone in the vastness of the cosmos. For Jill Tarter, co-founder of the SETI Institute in California, that's not an option. The researcher firmly believes that we simply haven't listened long enough or looked closely enough. Tartar said in an interview that space is an ocean, and in the first 50 years, we had just studied an area the size of a glass of water. Thanks to enormous technological advances, he said, it has become a bathtub in the last 10 years, yet that is still a vanishingly small fraction. Statements like, aliens do not exist, cannot be made according to the opinion of the SETI researcher, in spite of the so far missing successes at present. We live in the wrong time. The universe has existed for approximately 13.4 billion years. First galaxies existed according to the newest realizations already 200 million years after the Big Bang. Life on Earth needed 3.8 billion years to develop to what it is today. So it's conceivable that there were other living beings in the cosmos before the emergence of our modern and engineered civilization. Perhaps these sent signals to the Earth when humans just experienced the Stone Age and nobody noticed. Other civilizations could have perished in the meantime, or they simply gave up the search at some point and now think, as we sometimes do, that they are alone in the vastness of the cosmos. It's also quite conceivable that many other life forms exist in space that cannot pick up our signals. They are on a different stage of development and are possibly not interested in the universe and aliens at all. The distances make contact impossible. It sounds simple. We send a radio signal or a probe into the cosmos, and at some point, it must arrive somewhere. But the distances in space are still gigantic for our technical possibilities. The Voyager probes took more than 30 years to reach the borders of the solar system until they meet the next stars and planets in interstellar space. Several hundred to thousands of years can pass. The nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is a little more than four light years away from us. That doesn't sound so far at first, but we must be aware that only light would take a paltry four years to get there. Light races through space at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. We're currently shooting our spaceships into space using an enormous amount of fuel and with a maximum acceleration of 28,900 kilometers per hour. In space, 
Space shuttles travel at a snail's pace by comparison. If we wanted to reach Alpha Centauri with the current state of the art, we would need 75,000 years. Radio signals travel at the speed of light. So far, our signals can be heard within a radius of 60 light years. Within this circle, there are several star systems and certainly several dozens of planets, but nobody has answered yet. If at the moment, a distant culture at 60 light years away receives our signal, it would last a further 60 years until the answer would arrive to us. So it's conceivable that aliens have heard a radio message 10 or 20 years ago, but the answer has just not reached us yet. We are too primitive for the aliens. There are dozens of stories that aliens have already tried to contact us, but failed because the stubbornness of earthly politicians. Others even claim that there are such contacts, only they are kept secret from the general public. Most authentic at present are many hundreds of UFO sightings worldwide, as well as a striking number of sightings of unidentifiable flying objects around the International Space Station ISS. These sightings all suggest that aliens exist. Apparently, however, they only observe us and our activities in space and do not actively seek contact with us. According to some scientists and UFO friends, there may be good reasons for this. For a highly developed extraterrestrial species, we humans could appear like barbarians. We exploit our planet, have big social problems, lead wars among ourselves, and are on our way to letting our planet suffocate in garbage. That doesn't seem very attractive. In the 1960s, Russian researcher Nikolai Kardashev developed a scale that measured the level of development of a civilization by energy consumption and the way energy is produced. This scale originally had three levels and also took into account factors such as global peace, the effective and non-harmful use of resources, high social standards, and so on. We humans are currently at 0.6 on the scale, and we will only reach one if we get our environmental problems and tensions among peoples under control. Species, which can jet with UFOs through the whole universe, have exceeded the 2.5. So for these creatures, we could truly be something like semi-wild animals. They watch us, but avoid contact as a precaution because humans are still unpredictable. Aliens observing us might see our top modern ISS, like we see an oven from the 1960s. They wonder what people are doing in the capsule and why they are drifting in weightlessness and are hardly able to tame their hair in space. They see our rocket junk flying through space, our mountains of garbage, the space debris that is slowly accumulating even in orbit around the Earth. And then maybe they also see how we are desperately trying to colonize Mars because we are afraid of losing our own world soon. If the aliens then also watch Earth television and see Jeff Bezos announcing that he wants to move Earth's heavy industry to the moon, sophisticated aliens will just shake their heads, fire up the warp drive, and see that they get on. We have not recognized the aliens. There are researchers who claim that organic life can be only one form of life. Besides, it would be conceivable that there are aliens, which exist in other dimensions or in other forms. The true secret of life is still not deciphered. We only know that for some reason, simple, single-celled organisms, formed on Earth and in the course of billions of years, became such gigantic living beings as the dinosaurs or a technically developed species like us humans. But what really life is, we do not know as of today. We can only define it by biological values such as respiration, cell division, and metabolism. But life can be much more. Some spiritual traditions, or even ancient religions, claim that there are other forms of life practically just around the corner besides human beings of flesh and blood. Depending on the culture, these are called gods, spirits, fairies, dwarves, or even light beings. Some open-minded researchers consider it quite possible that biological life is a temporary phase. This can apply to the whole planet with its vegetation, animals, and humans, or also to single living beings. Almost everywhere in the world, since humans could think, there have been ideas about an immortal soul that lives on in another dimension after death. Perhaps we live as souls somewhere in another corner of the cosmos and have active contacts with other soul beings. Why it's perhaps better not to have contact. 
All the world longs for first contact. How nice it would be to finally meet another life form. Interesting aliens, perhaps beings who want to share their technological advances with us, or stop by for a coffee. Although Hollywood has created dozens of movies showing completely different scenarios, hardly anyone thinks about a nasty surprise during real first contact. We blithely send signals into space, sending capsules with details about our civilization, our DNA, and the state of our technological development automatically believing it will fall into suitable, or shall we say, peace-loving and sociable hands. But what if it doesn't? The Russian Kardashev was firmly convinced that technical progress is connected with an overall development of the species. In short, one could say that stupid and aggressive species will destroy their own planet and will not manage to reach the necessary light or faster-than-light speed for space travel. For Kardashev, it was clear that only life forms that have overcome their hatred, anger, and rage are capable of using sophisticated forms of energy and traveling through space. If he's right, all aliens capable of traveling the universe and reaching us would have to be socially sophisticated and friendly. Still, we can't rule out the possibility that even a peaceful other species might see us as food, because to them, we seem like ripe apples on a tree, and the aliens can't recognize our feelings and intelligence. So, now it's your turn. What do you think about these five reasons why we have no contact with aliens, and maybe never will? We welcome your ideas and feedback on the video, as always, in the comments. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time at Simply Space.